Okay. Continuing to work on some basics here and taking you out farther in the edges as well of what is possible as you get out, what is the kinds of tools you should try to get a hold of. I'm copying once again with Cam Studio, but or with Cam with Cam Studio, but or Camtasia, but Cam Studio is going to be a little bit better in terms of file size. So I'm just going to start inking here and we're going to look at this problem off on the left here and we're going to realize that we have a coordinate rotation. We have a rotation. Now, which means that in the end if we solve the problem in its rotating condition we're going to need to rotate back. So we're going to need to look at a rotation matrix and I just want to point out to you that that rotation matrix it's one of those ones that I've decided not to know the answer to except for that it looks like this. Cosine of, I know where to find it, right down here, Wolfram Alpha, sine of theta, sine of theta, and cosine of theta, where a negative goes either here or there. So that's going to be the rotation matrix after we solve this problem. And if someone were to present to you what is the forces in the X and the Y here and the forces in the X and the Y here. Some of you already realize that there's an algebraic relationship based on it here, based on this turn angle of 30 degrees. And for this one, there is no relationship, though geometrically you can tell in a second what these things are going to be, what these, what these directions are. So we're going to go through this one, showing you how first how to slide vectors, right, how to add them tip to tail about this point, and then just solve one for one result. So we're not going to use the calculator too much, but I'm going to try to keep that up and let you know that you can continue to work on these things even as you finish school, but we need to get to a point where you can solve this problem and think and look at what A, it looks like deflected, and B, what kind of reinforcing you should be thoughtful about doing. And so I'm going to go over here small screen but I can do something right now I'm going to do a pan right and zoom out a little bit here and I'm just going to start with this idea of if I need to solve for the reactions I'm going to want to save this file back because or because I'm going to need to put these forces back when I'm done solving this way because they are not where I'm going to show them in a second they are in fact where they are and so this one is causing a positive moment and this one's causing a negative moment, remembering that a moment is describes this the concavity basically of the of the shape. So this is going to be kind of cantilever over the end, and this one is going to make a dip in the middle. It's a smile, this is a frown. So I'm zooming in and out a little bit too much here. I've thickened up my line sizes here. And so what I want to do is find the, the point of concurrency. But before I do that, I'm just going to go here, file, save as and it's going to come up and I'm going to save as exam reactions backup. Now realistically I can do this with layers. You want to avoid moving things off to the side. You know, you want to avoid coordinate shifting because you're not going to coordinate shift back. That's a bad habit to start right now. You're better off making extra drawings or using layers. And so now what I'm going to do first, if you can see very faint here, I've got lines of force. I'm putting lines of force in the directions of every one of my unknowns. I'm going to zoom in here. So I've got a line and force at the reaction in the X at A. If we reaction in the Y, once we shift this thing, a line of force in the reaction in the X, once we shift this thing, I've got lines of force for the reaction here, a line of force for that force, and line of force for there. And even before I do the coordinate shift, I can go ahead and put a little circle here. at the point of concurrency, so a circle, or a block would be a great thing to put there if you made a block for your points of concurrency. So I'm going to put a little circle there and then zoom out. And we're going to come, we, we can do these without shifting our coordinates. So all we're going to do now here is going to go, a, I'll do a, let me do a copy because it's far enough away that we don't need to get rid of these. Copy that from the end point to the center point. In other words, I've done a 
transmissibility. And I'll do it in two steps this next one. Copy this one from there to there, from the endpoint there, back to that same point of concurrency. So I want to not go the grab, I want to grab the center. Okay, and I now need to add these two vectors as you learn, learn with John Court. And so I can do those by sliding. Now very often you'll just skip that step. And so I'll go ahead and slide this one. And you're not sliding the vector really. You're just adding the vectors. So you grab to the endpoint there. And then finally you want to get your resultant there. And you don't want to carry around these extra little forces here probably. So you're going to do a line. Depending on how many layers you've got set up, you could go to force resultant right there and draw a line from the endpoint here to the endpoint there. And you might even want to take the time to go here, left click, left click, spacebar, spacebar. C for copy, reference at, near, and you can't see it because I'm, I'm just going to rotate and get that, and then my second point is near that. So what I did essentially is I, I didn't copy the old one, but I put an arrow on that. Now again, this is probably best done, right, realistically, I'm zooming out, zooming in, probably best done on a sheet of paper first. Now, in effect, it can get a little bit overwhelming, but you want to put one more line of force, and maybe you make that one yellow so that line of force stands out. So I'm going to do an X line from the end point here to the end point there. That X line should be on the correct layer at very least line of force and then every now and then you can change the color of something if you want to keep it on a layer so you can organize that way but go ahead and you can change now by changing the property so you learn to click on something you learn to right click you go to properties and you can change the color and I'll change that color in the short term to something like yellow we have to change it back later Right, and so now we have essentially that line of force, which means a couple of things. If you can see, looking at this problem, that the line of force and that resultant is just, by golly, it's almost right through, but it's not exactly right through when I add those two together in this example here. So that line of force, right, and one of the bad things, sometimes on line of force, maybe you don't even want to keep that line type the same because you want to see where it intersects so you can go right click properties and change the line type to something continuous that you can see because it's less thick and when you do that you start to see what kind of we expected you start to see some things jump around that x line is very interesting just showing you as I zoom in and out of here that X line is kind of losing. Now that must have some sort of scale factor to it. So I'm going to leave it here for now. All right, that's a lot. So the last thing I'm going to do here now is in, a set, in essence for solving for the reactions we have this one force, this line of force, and we've got this kind of turn reaction. Here's what we know. At some point this line of force interacts with intersects with this one here and this one here. So those are the three lines of force that are important to us later. But first we want to get our brain into just rotating this thing. So we can do it do a rotation a lot of different ways. UCS, one thing we can see is just an entity or an object and I can grab that. It does not define a coordinate system because I grab the X line. Nice. But that object here does. So I'll do it the other way. X line, I'll do UCS, new, three point from the end of this, to the shift right click near of this, shift right click near that. And now I have my coordinate system. 
I don't have to hit that extra return and now I can say plan zoom center 0 comma 0 100 or thereabouts I can zoom farther in and now I've got my coordinate system that in reality that coordinate system has some numbers to them and that was a 30 degree shift 30 degrees shift to the left so you're gonna need to put it 30 degrees back when you get an answer alright I'm gonna stop this produce it see what it looks like and then move on